when somebody asks you to do something that is completely wrong or breaks the law, don't do it. <laughs> like, I, it, this sounds ridiculous and it sounds insane for me to have to be able to say this, but people in business, they're, they're very willing to compromise. Even if, even if it's just like, oh, you know, it's just this little thing, you know, it's just a little thing, and then the little thing, and then the little thing, and then all of a sudden it's a big thing. You don't have to say yes to everything. Real estate is a shady business, you guys. Don't get into it. <laughs> um... Alrighty, everyone, I'm back. Welcome back to my channel. I just wanted to talk about today something that I... That, as somebody who's been in business for about 10 years, I just wanted to talk about some of the things that I've learned and that I've had to deal with. Um, my very first jobs uh, were real estate jobs. I wanted to talk about how in my early days in real estate, I knew nothing. I mean, in my early days in business, just in general, I knew absolutely nothing. And by nothing, I mean I screwed up the post the postal machine on my first day uh prior to my real estate jobs in high school i had like a um a retail job working at a thrift store and i learned customer service there but that was pretty much it i had no skills of, and no real knowledge of how things worked and how the world worked and how to deal with people uh in a business setting so then after that i ended up quitting that job because uh well, that's another story for another time. But I ended up quitting that job. Uh, I was out of work from February to May. And then the day after, I think, or no, it was like two weeks after I graduated high school, I got this job in real estate. And this was my very first, like, real, hardcore, white-collar, sit-down job. And it was the first time I'd had, a, like, a hands-on boss that was there all the time, that was monitoring what I was doing, because that was one of the problems with my previous job. I had nobody making sure that what I was doing was correct or um, preventing problems from happening uh, anyway. So I go to this real estate job and I, I technically consider this person my first boss I ever had. She was the best boss I've ever had because she taught me everything I know. Not only has she uh, brought out my uh, customer service skills, but she also kind of taught me how to talk on the phone. I had a, a, an aversion to talking on the phone when I was younger. I still kind of do, but I was able to overcome that through working at this job. I learned how to answer the phone. I learned how to do pretty much all the basic office skills that, you know, I really wish people learned in high school so that you didn't have to be taught on the job how to do these things. But, you know, this is the society we live in. On the job training really is the best kind of training. So I learned all of those kinds of things. And so the first lesson I wanted to talk about is how don't underestimate how the basic skills and just being good at the basic skills sets you apart from everybody else. As somebody who used to hire people and probably will be hiring people in the future, I used to go through the resumes and people who didn't even know how to put together a basic resume, it's stuff that, you know, you should have known how to do this because you went through high school. But because they don't actually teach you these skills in high school anymore, uh, I know I did have a class in high school where we learned how to put together a resume, but it's like it's so antiquated like everything is speeding up in rapid pace you really should just go and google it like you don't need to take a class to learn how to do these things which is why there is no excuse for you not to know how to do these things do not be sending me a five page resume i don't have time to look at a five page resume look send me a one page resume unless you are a brain surgeon or somebody who has that kind of a profession i don't want to see more than one page one page one-sided I don't want to see more than that. Uh, but what I'm saying is when somebody goes through your resume and you don't have those skills, uh, and again, when you're just starting out, those are the skills that you should have. If you don't have those skills, you're probably not going to get the job. So that's my first point is make sure you have the basics down, uh, especially when you're just starting out. And if you are not just starting out and you still don't have the basics down, get those things down and get them down now. Uh, so that's my first point. But the larger topic I wanted to discuss on this show was something I learned while in real estate and it's uh, been kind of a, a trend throughout the rest of my career for the last 10 years is when somebody asks you to do something that is completely wrong or breaks the law, 
don't do it. <laughs> like, I, it, this sounds ridiculous and it sounds insane for me to have to be able to say this, but people in business, they're, they're very willing to compromise. Even if, even if it's just like, oh, you know, it's just this little thing, you know, it's just a little thing and then the little thing and then the little thing and then all of a sudden it's a big thing. It's, it sounds really basic for me to have to say this, but, uh, one thing that I learned when I was, I can't, I don't know if this was in my first year in real estate, but it was certainly within my first three years, there was an agent at the office that was notorious for, uh, being a little underhanded, being kind of shady, being difficult to work with, um, being, uh, looking out for herself, number one, and everybody else, you know, can kind of go suck eggs. <laughs> but, uh, so basically what happened in this instance, I was 18, 19, 20 years old in, in this first job. And one of the things that I learned right off the bat, I think I was told this on the first day, there's nothing that you can do that really could screw everything up because I wasn't licensed. So I wasn't, you know, I wasn't allowed to do really do anything. I wasn't allowed to sell real estate. I was just an assistant. And so, you know, I didn't have, I didn't have any of the responsibilities of that. However, I did have access to like all of the information on the back end, showing the prices and showing what things sold for and what things were pending. So for those of you who don't know anything about real estate, when you buy a house, you go into this 30 day to 60 day period. Sometimes it can even go longer. I've done some six month ones, believe me, being a little Trumpy there. But um, there's a period of time between the point at which you sign the contract and the point at which you actually own the house. That period is called escrow. And during that time, there is a price that you guys have agreed upon in the contract. That price might change because you're in the process of finding out during that period you get your inspections done you find out uh do, does it have termite damage does it have water damage does it have any other kind of damage that needs to be taken into account when negotiating the price and then you know you guys kind of your agents will haggle it out you'll say okay well i see there's damage to this part of the property again i'm not licensed please do not take this as licensed information um but the, your agent will say, okay, there's damage here. Can you guys come down on the price a little bit to accommodate? Or can you guys give us some cash in exchange, uh, for fixing this issue? Uh, because this wasn't, I mean, obviously we didn't know about this issue at the time of signing the initial contract. And so then there's the back and forth during that period. There's that initial price that you guys agreed upon. That price is confidential. And that was the only thing, the only thing that I was really, really told that I remember to this day, you cannot reveal that price. You have access to information that is privileged that you cannot give out, especially because you are not licensed. So I wasn't allowed to give out any information from the back end uh, program that housed all this. Uh, anyway, because I'm, again, I'm not licensed, still am not licensed, don't intend on being licensed, but you never know. Uh, but the rules were, I'm not allowed to give out any information to anybody. I can refer them to an agent or if my agent isn't around, I had somebody else that I could refer them to. Um, I had, you know, those were the rules. And the number one thing aside from that was even, uh, like beyond that, above and beyond that, I wasn't allowed to give out any information anyway, but even beyond that, I was not allowed to give out the information that was in that initial contract. Because after, after escrow closes and the deal is shut and done, then that information, whatever the closing price ends up being, that ends up being public to the agents. The agents get to see that after the fact and then they get to say, okay, well now that helps me inform the price of this house I'm trying to sell over here. But that information prior to the closing of the contract or the closing of the escrow, I should say, uh, is privileged and you can't give that out. So this agent comes up to me and starts wheedling me to try and get information about a house she was interested in that we were then, uh, we, we were in escrow, we were in, in uh, we were under contract with some buyers and being 18, 19, 20, I didn't know what to say uh, to get her off my back. She kept kind of wheedling me. Well, you know, yeah, 
uh, you know, I just wanted to kind of compare it with, you know, and, and do you happen to know what, what's going for right now? And, you know, she outright asked me, do you, you know, in this kind of manipulative, wheedling way. And my response, as per usual, was, I don't know, even though the truth was I did know. Uh, my response generally was, I don't know. Well, that was kind of my just, my little, you know, panic reaction, because I knew I wasn't supposed to give that information out. And I just decided just to lie and say, I don't know. Because what, you know, what was I going to, was I going to call her out? I was 18, 19, 20, and it, t it would take a lot more gumption and uh, business savvy to have been able to say that's privileged information and you shouldn't be asking me for it. Um, that, so that's my second point, is when somebody asks you to break the law, and that wasn't the only time I've had that happen, uh, because it was actually, it was a legal thing, I could not give out that information. Um, there, was, there was a couple of other times uh, that I'm not going to get into in this show, but there's been a couple of other times. Real estate is a shady business, you guys. Don't get into it. <laughs> um, there was a couple of other times uh, where other agents and uh, employers that I had after that job where there were some shady requests that I had to say, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. And that's something that I think people need to hear more often. Even, like, because there's people, you know... People will, will just assume, oh, you know, this is just how things are done. This is what people do. And that doesn't, just because that's what people do doesn't mean that that's what should be done. Um, you know, you do, if, if something is illegal, you don't have to do it. And come, this is coming from somebody who has managed people and who has, uh, you know, been a part of the hiring process of people and has advised people on, on resumes and so on and so forth. You don't have to say yes to everything. And if, if your boss really is unreasonable enough to say, you have to do this or you'll be fired, then you should leave. And I'm not, I, I know I've been in hard positions where I can't leave this job. I don't have anything else. I have to pay the bills. I have a loan I'm trying to pay off. I understand that's always a consideration, but you can't, sacrifice things like your own integrity and your own reputation on behalf of that. So fortunately I have, I mean, I have had to leave jobs, uh, over that. Uh, it, my, there's a reason I wanted to get out of real estate. I have had to leave real estate jobs in order to get away from bosses asking me to do things that were just not ethical. And so that's what I, that's the kind of the main point I wanted to talk about with this episode is you don't have to break the law in order to be a good employee. You don't have to do everything your boss says, especially if it's not legal or if it's unethical. It's not, and if your boss has a problem with that, then that's your boss's problem. It's not yours. So I guess my, my, I, I had, I had another story, but I can't remember what it was. That was the main story I wanted to talk about. Uh, there's been several other times, as I said, uh, where I've been confronted with unethical, um, moments in life and uh, it's not it's not easy and it's not comfortable and it makes the lead up to going into work it makes it really sucky it I hate going in knowing I have to tell my boss I'm uncomfortable with something I hate going in and saying that I hate going in and saying hey I can't do what you're asking me to do because you know it would break the law or whatever it happens to be but Kelly can't you just no no and you just kind of got to double down and you, here's another piece of advice for you. When, if you have to go in and you have to say, Hey, you know, I'm having a problem with this or Hey, you know, this, this doesn't seem quite right. This doesn't seem like it's in line with what, uh, proper ethics would, uh, demand go before. This is something that my dad and I have actually done before you go in, prep your lines know where the boundaries are. This is just like when you go into any negotiation in business, you should already have this down anyway, but prep your lines. This is what you will take and this is what you'll not take. And you don't, you don't change from that. So rehearse your lines, have your patented statement. This is a problem. I'm not comfortable with this. I'm not doing this. And then you can just repeat it like a broken record. And then it's less scary because you're not having to think up things. You can just say, no, and then when the wheedling starts and the, oh, but you know, you, you, if you could, you know, 
I've had this happen so many times. I've worked for so many different real estate agents where this has happened. And, uh, and you, you know, you hear them out, you listen to them and then you tell them no, cause you already decided you decided the night before you decided the week before you decided whenever before most of the time when I have made a decision, whether to, uh, confront an employer about something or whether to, um, I don't know whether to leave a job or something. I've already made the decision like days in advance and I've prepped my lines and I've already decided. And so there is no, that way you don't feel, you don't have to feel like you have to negotiate anymore. You can just go in. You've already decided. You've already decided what you're going to say, what you're going to do, how you're going to react. Sometimes you have to anticipate, okay, so this is what this person might say. And what is my reaction going to be? What is my response going to be? And then, and, and that way, if you anticipate things, then you're not surprised and you've already got your lines, you've already rehearsed. And even if you are surprised, you still have your fallback. I'm not going to do it. I'm not comfortable with this. That's the end. That's the end of it. And that's unfortunately the situation that a lot of people, whether you're in real estate or any other business, you're going to find yourself in. And it makes people feel like they're I, I, I just don't, I don't want people to feel like they're bad employees for saying, I'm not going to do something that's illegal, or I'm not going to do something that's unethical. You should never feel like you're a bad employee. The fact that you're coming up to your boss and saying, I don't think this is good for your company. I don't think this is good for you. I don't want to do something that's going to make you guys look bad, should tell you that you're the good employee. That is the situation. <laughs> this is, again, I'm telling you guys, don't go into real estate. This is like they don't go into real estate. Or if you do, make sure you realize that this is going to happen to you. You're going to meet with real estate agents are just as much the average Joe as everybody else. And they're trying to make money. And they're try and that's not a bad thing that they're trying to make money. There's a lot of really, really professional and ethical real estate agents that I have worked with that I think are some of, I mean, and, and, one of the top real estate agents that I worked for was a woman and she did not bend over for anybody. She did not say, I'm, I'm going to, you know, cheat my client or I'm going to do this or that. She never, it was always 100% the the T's had to be crossed and the I's had to be dotted with her. And she was my first boss. And that's what I'm saying. You guys, there are good agents out there and there are bad agents and there are also good bosses in any industry and there are bad ones. And you are going to meet with bosses that are going to tell you that they want you to do something that is clearly against your uh, ethical scruples and you're going to have to say no. And that's, that's just the bottom line. And um, just know that you're not the only one that's gone through it and I can laugh about it now because I've gone through it so many times and I can guarantee that I you know my job is great right now but maybe I have another job in the future where I have to go through it again and it'll suck just as much as it sucked before but you know you'll get better about at it with practice uh, and unfortunately you guys will probably have a lot of practice so that's my little pep talk for whoever wanted to hear it. I don't know how many of you guys watch this show and are younger than me. Um, but I guess what I'm, what I'm really trying to work on with some of these episodes is to try and talk to my younger self or myself from 10 years ago. Cause with the turn of the decade, uh, it's, uh, I was 18, uh, in 2009 and then I'm 28 now and I'll be 29, uh, coming up. And so I guess I'm talking to my 18, 19 year old self right now and just giving the advice that I wish that a contemporary had been able to tell me as well as people that were above me, because sometimes it's easier to hear it from a contemporary, if that makes any sense. Um, and sometimes it isn't, but that's my story for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I hope that if you feel like you're in a situation at work, where you're dealing with somebody who, um, you know, is asking you to do something that's unethical, that you feel like you have recourse, you can go to HR, but the main thing, this is the thing, this is the thing that you guys got to rely on more than HR is you've got to rely on your own ethics because sometimes HR makes mistakes. Uh, sometimes HR isn't, doesn't have the right priorities. Uh, so that's why, why you have to know what's right and what's wrong 
and you have to be able to check it's it's just like the government with the checks and balances you have to know what's right and wrong and then if HR has it correct then HR has it correct and if they don't then they don't because they're fallible as well so you have to be the one to stand up and say this is not this is not acceptable you have to be the one to say that it, you can't you can't rely on some some other department or organization or individual to make that decision for you you have to make the decision for yourself so that's my story and uh i hope you guys enjoyed it i will see you on the next episode